This video looks at uses of matrix multiplication as a means of motivating students. So previous videos have covered how you multiply matrices together and their key properties. And here we look at how multiplication might be used for problem solving in real engineering scenarios. First a reminder then of what the generic formula for matrix multiplication is. We've used this formula. So we've said if a matrix C is given by a matrix A times a matrix B, then you can find the coefficients of the C matrix, so here the ith row and the jth column, by doing this particular multiplication here. And what you'll notice is the ij element of the result has used the ith row of the left-hand matrix, so here the ith row of A, and the jth column of the right-hand matrix, which was here the jth column of B. And you'll also remember that the result C has its row dimension taken from A and column dimension from B. First example then, simultaneous equations. So matrix vector algebra is a compact and efficient way of handling linear simultaneous equations. And what we'll do here is we'll show you why that is and why it's convenient. Let's take a simple linear equation then. You can see it here, 3x plus 2y equals 4. Now what I can do is express this in matrix vector format. I'm going to use one matrix for the coefficients, that's the 3 and the 2, a vector for the unknowns, x and y, and we'll stick the 4 on the other side. So you can see here, I've got a row vector, 3 and 2, which has the coefficients, a column vector, x and y, with the unknown variables, and equals 4. I can do the same thing with any linear similar or any sort of linear equation. So here I've got minus x plus 5y equals 6. So you see I've got a row vector with the coefficients, a column vector with the unknowns, and equals 6 on the right hand side. Now the nice thing about matrices is that I can now combine these two equations into a single matrix vector equation. And we do it like this. You'll notice we've put the top equation on the top row of a vector, the bottom equation on the bottom row of a vector, and said the top one equals 4 and the bottom one equals 6. And then what I've done is I've said 3x plus 2y and minus x plus 5y can instead be represented with this matrix 3, 2, minus 1, 5 times this vector x, y. And you'll see the 3, 2 has come from the top equation and the minus 1, 5 from the bottom equation. So what have I done? So I missed a line there. I've basically taken two equations and turned them into a single matrix vector equation. So it's more compact. We'll do some examples. Put the following into matrix vector format. So all I do is first of all construct some blank matrices of the right size. And I can see for these two, my variables are x and y. So I've put them in the right-hand vector. My right-hand side is minus 1 and 2. So I've created a vector with minus 1 and 2. And then what I'm going to do is say, OK, how do I reproduce this top equation, 5x plus 6y? And hopefully it's clear. I put 5 here and 6 here. And the top row will give me 5x plus 6y. And then how do I produce x minus 3y? So I put a 1 here and a minus 3 here. And now you have a single matrix vector identity instead of two equations. Let's look at this bottom one then. Here we've got three variables, so I'll make my matrix slightly bigger to give myself space. And again, you'll see I'm going to create a vector on the right to store the unknowns x, y, and z. And then after the equal sign, I'll put the right hand side 3, minus 4, and 10. So which equation gives me the 3? What well, is this one here? x minus z plus 2y. So that's 1x plus 2y minus 1z. Next equation, 3z minus 6y. So I've got no x minus 6y and 3z. And the final equation, you'll see I've got 20x, 13y minus 4z. So I've taken three equations and turn them into one equation. But now it's a matrix vector equation. So I can write this as capital A, 
capital X equals, for example, B. Final example then, this one's now got four variables, but I'll do it very quickly, just so that you get the idea. So my unknowns now are A, B, C and D. So I've put those in a vector, vector of unknowns. My right hand side, 12, 4, 2 and 9. So I've put that as a vector on the right hand side. And then I say, OK, what's the top equation? A plus B minus C. So 1A, 1B minus C, no D. What's the second equation? No A, 1B, 2C minus 3D. Next equation, 1A, no B, 14C, 1D. And last equation, 12A, 1B, no C, and 14D. So you see we've taken four linear simultaneous equations and turned them into a single matrix vector identity. And therefore it's a lot more compact and efficient to write and carry around. Now, can I use this matrix vector um, notation in order to solve these simultaneous equations? And the key point is that if matrix A is square, it won't always be square, but if it's square and if it has an inverse, inverse is a topic that we'll do in a few uh, videos time, then where I've written AX equals B, as long as A to the minus one exists, so that's how you write the inverse of A, you write it as A to the minus 1. Then I can write X equals A to the minus 1 B. Here, I've done A to the minus 1 for you, you see I've put it in the brackets here. So this is A to the minus 1. But again, a reminder that we will solve this in later videos. But the key point is, once you have taken your linear simultaneous equations and expressed them in this compact form, you can actually write the solution in compact form. So the solution is mathematically compact and convenient. Different example then. Use of matrices with data manipulation. So let's assume that we've got a model that takes a form a bit like this. You'll see the output y is given by some parameter a times x, some parameter b times z, some parameter c times w squared, and some parameter d. Now what we can do is we can represent the different values of y we get for different values of x, z and w. And the most compact way of doing this is with matrices and vectors. So we'll just show you the solution. You'll see here I've generated a left-hand vector which has got all the different values of y, y1 to yn. y1 was based upon x1, z1, w1 squared, obviously multiplied by the parameters a, b, c, t. Y2 was based upon the values x2, z2, w2 squared. Yn on the parameters xn, zn, wn squared. The key thing, however, is you can see I've taken lots or n different sets of equations and I've represented them by a single equation. So here I could have y equals, and you're going to have to come up with a variable that I could call the matrix T, times theta. So for example, this vector here could be theta. Those are the parameters that you don't know. Y you know, capital T you know, and theta are the parameters you wish to find out. And this is a very common format for finding unknown parameters A, B, C, D for a model given you have observed data. And you'll see it's a very compact way of representing the data. Another use of matrix multiplication. So a simple example that will come up quite often in topics like robotics and mechanics is the change of coordinates from one set to another. So here you'll notice we've got a point V, which is coordinates X and Y, and this is defined in against an axis X, and you'll see here an axis Y. So the question is, what happens if those axes change, if they rotate? So here we go. You can see I've rotated the axis to these new pink axes. And what I want to know now is what's happened to the coordinates x and y. What are the coordinates in the new frame, the pink frame? So these dotted lines, that represents the new x prime, and this dotted line, the new y prime. So these x prime and y prime are the coordinates in the new 
rotated frame. Now I can do a bit of algebra which I won't dwell on and you can see that x prime is x cos theta plus y sine theta, y prime is minus x sine theta plus y cos theta and the key thing you'll notice from what we've already done in this video is I can use a matrix vector format to represent what's going on here. I can say the vector of coordinates in the new space is given by some matrix which is a function of theta, theta being the angle of rotation, times the coordinates in the old space. So I get this concept of a matrix multiplier which gives me the link between the coordinates in the original frame and the rotated frame. Now the matrix can be used to change from one coordinate frame to another and so it's often defined as a rotation matrix. So what you'll find is people will often use a notation a bit like this. Here I've called it T, you don't have to call it T, so T of theta. So the link between X prime, Y prime and X and Y is given by this matrix T of theta. Now there's another subtlety you might want to notice here, that here T of theta represented an anti-clockwise rotation of the frame of reference. You'll see that the pink axis was an anti-clockwise rotation through theta relative to the original axis. However, there is an alternative viewpoint which can also represent a clockwise rotation of the point. So if the axis were to stay still, but the point was to have a pure rotation of theta, you would get the same effect. Rotation matrices have some key properties and these are best discussed after videos on determinants which will come later. But the key thing is a pure rotation must not change the size of the vector. And therefore you get certain properties like this, that in the original and in the new frame of reference the radius of the point must be the same. So the square root of x squared plus y squared must be the same as x prime squared plus y prime squared. Moreover, you can show that if you multiply this rotation matrix by its transposed, you must get the identity. Now, you can also get this concept of magnification or scaling. And what we can do is use a diagonal matrix to scale elements in particular axis directions. So we can show that here. You'll see I've chosen a diagonal matrix, lambda on one diagonal, mu on the other diagonal, and if I multiply x, y by this diagonal matrix, then it's clear that x prime is going to be lambda x, and y prime is going to be eta y. So you can get a pure scaling in specified directions with a diagonal matrix. Now within robotics, you might need a transformation that uses both rotation and magnification. Or indeed the magnification might be along an axis which is not the standard basis set. Now that's way beyond the purpose of this video but hopefully you can see that in principle a combination of T of theta rotation matrices and D which is scaling matrices can be used to obtain the overall transformation that you so a summary, we've outlined some common uses for matrix multiplication, which is representing and solving simultaneous equations, representing data dependence on no parameters, and coordinate transformation and scaling.